For the thousands in the comments and the millions listening on YouTube Premium. All right, folks. Welcome to Canitro. <laughs> this was one of the most boring episodes of Nitro. You were correct, Rob. Bo. Like, how how did you feel? About yeah. That? So, like I was saying before, my technical issues. Uh, I we were talking about guitar stuff, and I almost like. I I want to save opinions for this so we can live react to each other. Obviously, mm. I like. This was the first time. Okay, so I've been traveling a bit, so I haven't been watching along with you guys. So this was I like caught up, and this was the first time where an episode was like, Jesus Christ, still got fifteen minutes left. Like I I could not. <laughs> And also, it's funny too because, by you know, we'll get to it. But by the end, like the the overall arcing story is like where it was the last time I I was on. Can mm -hmm. I throw exact same place? Exact yeah. same place where same. it's like, whoa! <laughs> it's just like, all right, man. It, it is a uh, snail's pace. The last two weeks, we've been jumping ahead to ninety nine and two thousand, which has been its own. Uh, form of torture, but uh, I was very much looking forward to getting back into '95 because I mm. felt like uh, I felt like you know we've committed to this, <laughs> you know, mm. like I, I'm engaged in all the stories, and this this felt like maybe half the roster didn't show up or something, like someone was asleep, <laughs> like like the scripts didn't get mailed out, so yeah. they had to wing it, like something something felt very very off about this episode, which uh, is and, bizarre because. On paper, good card, to be honest with mm -hmm. you. Like every match, I was like, I kind of want to see this. Can you? I don't not want to see this. Rob, do you have it there? Do you have the card? I do. Candy? Like, I do. First, first match is Harlem Heat. That uh, one, that was cool. First, first like, American Males. American, American Males. Males. I will yeah, say, which, uh, from watching the Apex Predator <laughs> um, YouTube best of highlights like religiously he intros mm -hmm. with booker t or harlem heats music and like just the i, I, was, I, I, I was immediately and into it go 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 and it so always cool. it has that like the industrial uh, like can sound like the oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like the, <laughs> i don't know what that is yeah the like golden eye Oh, dude, sound. my favorite yeah, the, generic themes, dude. Yeah, fuck. Are we we gotta evolve? bring that sound dude, back. Yeah, yeah. the The <laughs> golden eye, the way you put it, is perfect. It is the golden eye <laughs> sound. Yeah, whatever that is, is so cool. It's like the steam release. It's like hitting. It's like hitting a a keg, but also the wind <laughs> at the same time. It's crazy. <laughs> But I love that sound. I love the Harlem Heat song. And I love that this is, I think this is the first time they've done their finish, which oh, is just like a flipping, flipping leg drop. Harlem Hangover fucking rocks. Their outfits look fucking sick. They are jacked. They're huge. Yeah, they're huge. They kick fucking ass. What are their I names? Oh, Booker that. T and Stevie, Stevie Ray. Ray. Stevie Ray. Yeah, they, Stevie Ray is fucking huge <laughs> he's such a big guy the fact yeah, that Harlem booker Heat t is the <laughs> booker t is the ray phoenix of the team yeah like, that's so nuts <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah and he's he's jacked himself he's a jacked over six foot uh guy and i and you gotta give credit i think to sister sherry i feel uh sherry very much completes the package i've mm -hmm. i hated this whole storyline with her and robert parker it, it was so it just it it felt beneath Sherry, like, because mm. it's like she turns into this, like, damsel in distress. And, like, for me, Sherry was always a badass heel who wasn't afraid to, you know, stick her thumb in a, in a baby face's face. You know, so <laughs> yeah. she shouldn't just be, like, smitten like this. I don't know. It was weird. There was a very funny part, though, when uh, Colonel Parker came out. And uh, he's oh. got the gift box. Yeah. And, and and then they're like, oh, oh, he might have a rock in there. Uh, Bobby Heenan goes. And then Mongo goes, oh, what do you know that we don't know? And Eric Bischoff has to remind him, Mongo, the storyline for the last month has been that Colonel Robert Parker is trying to court Sister Sherry. We all know this. This is not <laughs> new. <laughs> Mongo's like, ah, I just, oh, we, we skipped, by the way, uh, Pepe, uh, Guardian Angel, Angel Pepe. Angel, yeah. 
Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Back, we back gotta, in my good graces. We got to we we got to get that peppy birch out. <laughs> I need it. We, I need C- buried heat C-Pepe. to do like a line of peppy. Capepe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> incredible yeah and then what uh, he uh, like he like she swoons because of money is that what it was remind there me. was a no it was a it was a, a ring like an engagement oh it was ring, an actual ring what it was there yeah. something else with money later on in the episode no uh, i'm just oh, imagining I'm not sure hey yeah sometimes hey, uh, my so brain you were writing a better show in your head <laughs> yeah <laughs> i was stunned that they spent the announcer spent the match talking about the match and not hulk hogan this is what where this it was at this point that i'm like do they have nothing going on this week is that why they're just talking about the match and dude well I, we're not going to spoil it but at the end it's like they could have really focused on hulk hogan they were truly yeah. could you know what i, I mean I like, will whoa. Say, oh yeah he's here yeah exactly it's like I will say when the when the mat when the first match started, the big from the top of the episode once they once it's welcome to like Monday Nitro, through the entrances, they did not take a fucking breath. They talked the entire time, both entrances talking over it. I have here in my notes, uh, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> And I quote. <laughs> I guess and I quote, that's like um, the, the elevator pitch of the whole episode is like someone's tuning in like, ah, let's see if I'm going to watch this week. And they're going to hit you with everything right away. So I guess they're really trying to to get the viewers to stay, I suppose. Just, yeah. Yet sometimes there's like at least a breath, mm. like a moment. But they just did not stop talking and talking um, over each other. And over the music and over the wrestlers, t- it was so insane. I felt like I was losing my mind for a minute. <laughs> One thing I've noticed watching these back with you guys is the first match is usually pretty good. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like yeah. the best one, right? Like right yep. out of the gate. I, I, that's at least a pattern I've been noticing. I think they just want to hook you in right away. Yeah. You're, you're tuning yeah. in. They want to keep. They want to keep you from flipping to those other guys. <laughs> That's their plan. Is like show put the good wrestling on first, and then hype up the stars that we pay too much. Right. To make you think the it's it's all gaslighting to make you think that like if you watch like Booker T do a flipping leg drop, they think that you might be tricked into thinking that every wrestling match was that good on the show. Right. <laughs> right. Like, you should have seen WCW. Hulk Hogan did a flipping leg drop. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> if I imagine from the top row. No, this is yeah. very much also, you're right, Harlem Heat at their peak. This is when they were, like, the most kick-ass tag team. And when WCW had a pretty cool uh, tag team division for a moment. Mm. Uh, and yeah. so uh, right after this, uh, to your point, Sting and Lex Luger come out to talk to me and Gene Okerlund, hyping up that Sting is in action. Uh, and also, uh, he's facing Kurosawa, as you recall, your favorite mm-hmm. wrestler, Kurosawa. Oh, my God. Uh, Do you know about and- this, Bo? Do you know about Kurosawa? I they know. took this New Japan guy named Nakanishi. Yeah. And they just, they in, in a room, they were like, I don't know, who's the most famous Japanese guy that we know? Kurosawa? It's yeah. like if they... It's like if, uh, like Vader in Japan, they were like, "Ladies and gentlemen, Steven Soderbergh." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's pretty good. Fucking I did not so know good. that. I, I mean, I obviously I know the Kurosawa name, but I did not uh, consider that. Jesus Christ! Yeah, I didn't consider it until until you started joking about it. Well, it, dude, it totally. We're jumping ahead <laughs> again a little bit, but there's a commercial. Like one of the commercials. Oh my God. Oh! For Starcade. Yes. It is in my notes. Well, before we get to the commercial, uh, yeah, hold on. This yeah. sets up the commercial. Yeah. We learn that th- the main event for Starcade is this is how they tell you on this is the first time on Nitro they're man- mentioning the main event of Starcade. And you may have missed it, yeah. but it is going to be a a triangle match. It's not a three way dance. It's not a triple threat. It's a triangle match, okay. which is. Sting versus Ric Flair versus Lex Luger. And the winner of that match will go on to face Macho Man Randy Savage, who is the world champion, for the title later that night. 
And what is a triangle match? A triangle match means two people are in the ring, one person is on the apron, and they have to tag in. There can only be two people in the ring at once. That's kind of a cool stipulation. It's, it's, it's unique. It's, it's unique. Like I could see it if if the story was compelling enough. I could see it. You know. Yeah. But, but it's the same. <laughs> it's for a shot at the title later that evening. That's and what's insane. so crazy? It's here's a, here's what makes it even more insane. Mm. The whole initial gimmick of the pay per view is USA versus Japan, as we're going to get to when we talk about this incredibly racist commercial that they yes. air. Uh, and there's seven matches in this tournament to determine which country is better. Sting, Lex Luger, and Macho Man are in that tournament. So they're going to be wrestling at least twice each. Yeah, so, well, someone's going to be... Maybe even three times. Someone, the only person not yeah. wrestling in the tournament it's is Ric Flair. Flair. Right, so, okay. <laughs> but either way, if he wins that match, he has to face Macho Man, so he's wrestling twice. And Macho Everyone's Man is wrestling, wrestling twice. once? No, Macho Man is also wrestling twice because he's in the he's in USA the vs Japan tournament. <laughs> it's so stupid. It's unbelievably stupid. Like they don't have enough wrestlers. It's so confusing. Why not just make it a tournament for the belt then? Like why not just do that? Yeah, right. Why do the tournament and then also the <laughs> or do you imagine? Oh, oh why, why? You might be okay. So I I read the Observer and it turns out that they realized after coming up with this USA vs Japan thing that like. Oh, nobody's going to buy a pay-per-view where the main event is like Macho Man versus a Japanese guy that nobody knows. So we have to add like a main event or something. Imagine for a, a tournament yeah. where then the finals is the triangle match and it becomes a kind of like there's two Americans and one dominant Japanese guy. And it's like, come on, man, you got to do this for the country. It, it and would be then, so much cooler. It you know what so I mean? Like cooler. you could yeah. have. It, it's there. Hey, but what do I know? So so the commercial that that people saw and signed off on and approved is it's first of all, there's Dude, the gong. It's a little <laughs> gong and then like bing 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 oh bing. And it's just God. like an, inv an an invasion from the land of the rising yeah. sun. Oh, it's like that's right, that's what it, it was. Says. That was the line. They they did everything but like show planes dropping bombs over palm trees. Yeah. It Three. was up. So fucked up, and the last pay per view like was World War plane, Three. <laughs> in, in, if in the, yeah, this is insane, if Bo, it's like if if in Bo's camera, just a little plane came by and dropped bombs. Dude, like Every, the only thing missing from this, yeah, or like the fucking the Okinawa like flag. They like, did it, the, the, you know what? But you know what I mean. It was just like oh, holy the, shit, the sunburst guys. flag. Yeah, like what? What are we doing? You don't need it. Just, this. It, <laughs> like, it, it was, I was baffled. Yeah, I feel like I even shocked. in 95, that is very inappropriate. And, and the thing is, like, the Japanese wrestlers are being brought in to be celebrated. These are top of the industry professional wrestlers. And you're, it's, it's so bad. And, it's, and they're it's, being, it's embarrassing. They're being brought in as like worthy opponents too. So it's yes, like, yeah. you want your audience to take them seriously, but then you, you're kind of pigeonholing. I couldn't, I couldn't believe that. <laughs> I like, I want, I, I needed someone to apologize to me. Somebody, yeah. <laughs> anybody. Yeah, that was horrible. And this is their really WrestleMania, by the way. This is their big event. Oh, yeah. Starcade is the main one, right? Yep. Yeah. Does I did WCW, like that always said it was the, at, at the end of the year. Go you know ahead. how um, WWE has WrestleMania, Rumble, SummerSlam, King of the Ring, right? Mm -hmm. Does yeah. WCW have four equivalents? I don't yes. think that, uh, it would well, be like Halloween Havoc would be one of them. Best pay-per-view uh, ever. All time. Super Brawl. Super Brawl. And I guess, I guess, Bash at the Beach. Yeah, Bash dude. at the Beach. That's yeah, the NWO dude, I one. like that. So like that a, the WWE, the WWE pay per views. Oh, are war like, games. Yeah, yeah. Oh, war games. WWE pay per views are all like serious and kind of scary, and the WCW ones are like a Pokemon Snap worlds. Just like, <laughs> yeah. where are we going this time? Halloween yeah. Town. We're yeah. going to the Spring Stampede. Yeah, it's, yeah. So, it's, it's so good. It's the Great American Bash. <laughs> Welcome to oh, wow. WCW Rumpus Room. <laughs> <laughs> it's and they're having a great time. And the thing is, anytime they announce a pay-per-view, I'm like, 
That sounds fun. Yeah. So How was World War Three? Um, whole card was pretty sick, but yeah, the, the match, the, the match itself, yeah, the World War Three match, you can tell the the audience and attend in the attendance was having the best time watching it. Okay, but you can't film it because, because it's just three rings. Yeah. Yeah. it's they three Royal Rumbles it. happening at once, and they just it, there was no possible way to cover it. So like until like eventually like the final 15 are put into like one ring and then you can watch it but the first like half an hour unwatchable <laughs> insanity yeah. you're watching it looks like our podcast but if in each camera it's just 30 Damn. dudes <laughs> okay so back to what happened after uh sting okay so there was a cool promo with sting and luger and basically Sting is explaining himself. And also, I like that Sting has the added touch of he's letting his dark roots grow in. His five o'clock shadow is coming in. So you're they're trying to tell the story of whose side is Sting on. Is he a good guy or a bad guy? And he explains that, look, Lex Luger has been his best friend for the last decade. And even though he's had a change of even though he has this new friend that none of us like, <laughs> I'm not going to stop being friends with him. We've all been there, folks. I think this is a very relatable story point, and it's oh a very unique. God. It's a very unique story that I feel wrestling doesn't usually tell a story this nuanced, dude. So, so <laughs> that's one of my favorite things in wrestling. Period. Like all all promotions, all time, and it, I like because it'll often follow wrestlers to different promotions and stuff. Is I love the like lifelong rivalry or lifelong like companionship yeah so like uh omega and ibushi kane and undertaker sean and hunter yeah later on when warrior comes back to wcw and and uh, hogan's like freaking out like i love and in this one they reference it twice about like this is my best friend and macho man's your best friend hogan and, like would you leave him in the lurch kind of a thing like i love that i yeah. love the like it spans all companies and all time. This is my guy. I, I, I've always like, that'll get me every fucking time. So yeah, I like this that is great. about staying in Luger. I think it's, it's very cool. I think it's great. Also, dude, Sting is the fucking best. He is simultaneously setting up this plot line. He is setting up Lex Luger's match later tonight for him. And then also <laughs> explaining the triangle match. My guy is do is doing the work of He's the three best. men in one promo. He's the greatest. Does he go? Yeah, does he wrestle like talk. right after this promo? Does he wrestle? Yeah, literally. Right, like he tries to go to the back, and they're like, "No, bro, you're up, you're up. That's, your music's playing." So that's <laughs> something ahead. that I've noticed with these two is they do that a lot, where it's like promo and you're on, like and you're on. Yeah, there's no. Oh, I'm out now. Yeah. <laughs> Also, yeah, his his dark roots growing in us. It's in. He should not be able to pull off that look. Mm -mm. He look. You should look. Anyone else? You're just like that's Mark McGrath from Sugar Ray, mm. not Sting. <laughs> he looks beautiful. He looks perfect. Yeah, Who the fuck great. said Sting Ray? I'm a genius, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yes, yeah. Sting Ray. Sting Ray, baby. That's this like era. It. You've named who, it. You've dubbed it. Who did uh, who did Sting wrestle? Kurosawa. It was a very forgetful match. Forgettable Dude. match. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah there, was nothing, there, was, there was nothing to it. It was a big bang boom. Sting gets the splash. It's, it's I guess, a way to show. It's weird because this is a way to hype up the pay-per-view. But, again, the Japanese contingent looks whack. Like, it's not threatening at all. No. Uh, no, not at so all. I don't, I don't get that. Then the next, uh, match we get, I was blown away by this match. Scott flash Norton, who had only debuted on the second episode of nitro jobbing out like a total jabron to the giant. Yeah. Uh, and both of these guys looked bad in this match. Neither of these guys came out <laughs> looking good. Uh, I don't know I why they put Norton in this position. I would disagree for two things. Number one, the giant looks fucking amazing. Big Show looks un like physically. Yes, physically. Like, absolutely. I, I'm just like, look at this man. 
Yeah, I can't like, like I can't believe WWE specimen. didn't didn't like snatch this guy up right away. You Immediately, know? yeah. They 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 waited. Uh, they they. I did not know that he ever looked like this. He's mm-hmm. jacked as shit. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, you know, I feel like I know that wrestlers themselves do not like the choke slam. I think everyone's they're all over it. They're mm-hmm. over the choke slam. Every fucking time I see a choke slam, I'm like, that's the cool, that's the coolest move of all time. If you're I a big man, agree. it's just like, why not? It's so right? cool. Uh, Choke slam and power sick. bomb, baby. Big show. I love the power bomb too. He like screams at one point. I think after the match. Yeah, and it's pretty scary. <laughs> it's honestly, yeah. I was he's like, got oh. a, he's got a sick growl. <laughs> yeah. Uh, also, I noticed that they they just full on mention Andre the Giant like a lot. Yeah, which is yeah, kind of supposed cra- to be Andre the Giant's son. Oh, is that he? was the yeah? That's that's what they were. Oh. That's the gimmick that, that, that they initially give him that they eventually drop. But yeah. he's introduced as the son of Andre. Ah, uh, but it's crazy because Andre was only ever in WWF at the time, right? He made one appearance uh, at the end of his life. Like, is actually his last television appearance was this kind of Hall of Fame thing for WCW, which. Oh. It's a it's a very controversial moment because Vince McMahon at, at that point has said, "Look, you're you're done. I don't. I'm not going to put you on TV anymore. So just go go home." And he was like, "Fuck you! <laughs> like I, you don't tell me what I've done. I tell you what I've done." And he showed up on WCW, but he looked in terrible shape. Mm. He was sitting down. Like it's not like he wrestled or did anything. But yeah, tech, he, he technically he never wrestled. In a WCW. Movie. So, but maybe uh, at that appearance, there was something in the contract that was like, hey, in the future, maybe you have maybe. a kid. Maybe he's fucking huge. Yeah. Uh, maybe the, he's he going to go died. on to be, you know, Santa Claus and Jingle all the way. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> the, uh, the uh, he's dead. So they just did it with like, yeah. uh, like, without asking anyone's permission you think so they put him is that oh like, they asked, i think so for sure they asked no one's permission they just so put because uh the giant is just a guy that hulk hogan saw one time and was like that guy's really big really you lose you should lose to me on television so paul was so paul white was just walking around somewhere and hogan spotted him or was it like at it the, was at a uh it's even uh the story is even crazier it was some sort of celebrity uh wrestling event with Danny Bonaducci and uh Paul White was one of the bouncers or something. Oh dude, that's like uh, uh what's his name from Green Mile? John Coffey. What was that guy's mm-hmm. name who died? Michael Clark Duncan. He had like the same story. He was just like a big guy. And they're like, okay, hey. here I, here's here's the wiki. Uh, after school, White worked various jobs, including bouncing, bounty hunting, and answering phone calls. Uh, through, <laughs> Hello, bounty through, hunters. <laughs> <laughs> through doing the latter for a karaoke company, he met Danny Bonaducci in a live microphone amateur contest on his morning radio show. Uh, I think, okay, now I remember. So, Paul White called in and did a Hulk Hogan impression uh. <laughs> to Bonaducci's radio show. Bonaducci in- introduced White to his good friend, Hulk Hogan. They had an informal basketball game as part of uh, the WCW promotion for an upcoming show at the old Rosemont Horizon, now oh. the Allstate Arena. Been there, baby. Uh, oh. And Hogan liked how White worked the crowd and recommended him to World Championship Wrestling's Vice President Eric Bischoff. Wow. And uh, and and so and such. How about that? That's yes, pretty that's cool. That's incredible. All right. Hey, I'm. It's a, how many times has that venue been renamed? It, how... As far as I've been alive, only twice. It was the okay. Rosemont, and then it became the Allstate. But when it became the Allstate, it got like kind of heavily redone, remodeled. And now it it's old. It's been changed one more time. No, I think it's still the Allstate. No, it's still it's the okay. Allstate Arena. Yeah. Either way. It should have been. It should have been called Portillo's Arena. Like, oh, come on, tell me about it. Tell <laughs> yeah. me about it, brother. That's all I've ever wanted. <laughs> <laughs> Port- Portillo's Arena. Oh my God, the That's dream. It. The dream. Uh, the so next. Yeah. Oh, do you have? Do we have any more thoughts on the giant? No. Cool choke slam. 
The Cole, choke slam looks amazing. Yeah. Yeah, great choke slam. And, and do, uh, yeah, go on. Sorry. So next we have a really cool segment, and this is the type of stuff wrestling promoters love. Mm -hmm. Sir Charles Barkley walks out with the Nature Boy, Ric Flair. And that's how you have to say it, the Nature Boy, because that's how he says it. Dude. And Charles Barkley is clearly the biggest Ric Flair fan. He's doing the bow down on the microphone he puts over Ric Flair. He practically says Ric Flair is a better basketball player than he is. <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. I... Once again, I think the last time I was on a Kanitro was the one where the power goes out during Flair's promo and then comes back on. Remember? Yeah. Yes, once yes. again, I'm just like blown away at how good he is. He's just He's so good at talking. Awesome at talking and doing the fucking the thing and going into the rope. It's just like he's so fucking awesome. <laughs> he's so sick. <laughs> ah. I didn't how understand the how about, how about Sir Charles's fit with the uh, five XL t shirt tucked into the Jinko ass jeans? <laughs> he would look he he would look not out of place in today. Right. Absolutely. He would, he would be the most fat he's the most again, he is the most fashionable person alive. Well, would, I, dude, I you know, I, I think we've talked about this. I understand the reason for like Bad Bunny and Mike Tyson. Totally. And Dennis Rodman and Carl Malone for some reason. I understand that, but I fucking hate it. I hate it. I don't <laughs> need the crossover. I don't, I never want, even as a kid, I would be like, yeah, Mike Tyson's yeah. cool, but like, what, what? Like, I, I just, it never translated to me. So I never understand these kinds of. It makes it fake. Exactly. Yeah. It, it breaks the immersion. Totally. I can, I can like, understand. These are all these are all fighters. Uh, I mean, I here's the and there was never like an MMA person, like right. a person from famous MMA when I was a ch child. Ken or Shamrock. whatever. He was probably the in like Blackman. Yeah. Though they were yeah. like the first ones, and that and they were fucking awesome. I yeah, thought they yeah. were they, sick, but they you know? they committed themselves exactly. Fully. Even, was I had never seen I've never seen a Ken Shamrock anything. But he was an MMA. Oh, he was oh dude, he, I think he won the... I'm probably wrong about this, but he won one of the first UFCs. Like, when there were yeah, no... Yeah, he's one of the founding, like, uh, top guys of UFC. When there were no holds oh. barred. Like, when you could do yeah. anything, he won. <laughs> he shot a guy with a gun. Yeah. <laughs> he's, one, he's one of the top names in UFC, and he made the crossover. And he was an awesome wrestler. Dude, he I was loved fucking him. awesome. He, was, he had great his, his, music. <laughs> he was fucking yeah. sick, dude. He had a great new metal song. His his nickname was the world's most dangerous man. World more, and oh, he had a, I love. He that. had a cool feud with The Rock really early on when he was Nation of Domination Rock with like brass. Yeah, like they shit. were both coming up. Yeah, I gotta watch some Attitude Era. I've mm -hmm. seen none of it. Oh, oh, Shamrock mm -hmm. was cool. Plus, I think he was brought in as a guest referee with the infamous Hitman Stone Cold. I have seen yes. it. He's that, that he's guy. The one who, he stops yeah, yeah. it. That's Ken yeah, Shamrock. Yeah. Come on. Okay. Yeah. He yeah, doesn't yeah. even fit in a jersey. He's it's fucking so yeah. good. <laughs> That's his debut. It's so good. But anyway, back to Charles Barkley. I just I It never was so funny it. that uh the, the Phoenix crowd was booing Charles Barkley. Did you notice that? Well, oh. they were booing Ric Flair. Anytime oh, yeah. he was like oh. basketball, they were like, Yeah. And then he was like, <laughs> But you gotta cheer for Ric Flair though. And they were like, Fuck you, Fuck no. You. <laughs> Like, he's a bad guy, Charles. Uh, here, I'm. I feel. Uh, I I think little appearances and like and stuff are fun, especially like I love. I can't wait to see the Dennis Rodman stuff. Like when oh, I I did not so know good. that that happened until I watched um, the Last Dance. <laughs> yeah, I was like. There's WCW with Dennis Rodman, dude, and I it was can't wait to see it. It was Dennis Rodman and Hogan, right, versus Carl yep. Malone and DDP. That's fucking sick. It's like actually, and and someone, it was great. someone it was said really that, good. Someone eventually said at one point that Carl Malone could have been a wrestler. I yeah, believe. it was Somebody, really him. Rodman was way too drunk right. to uh, uh, really do anything. Dude, I think good. also because he was anxious. Like, like it's not just because he's a fuck up. I think Dude, he just Carl, got so Carl nervous. Malone, Olympic Dream Team gold medal winner. Yeah, lands with like a diamond zero percent body fat. He lands a diamond cutter <laughs> on the outside of the ring. 
He just drops straight to his back and he's worth millions. It's crazy. It's crazy. That's right. But anyway, Charles Barkley. Is, also, you saying that happens and you were like, you hate it? <laughs> I, I just, I never oh, no, needed it. Oh. I, it's, it's like, I know you guys watch the David Arquette thing. It's like, yeah, I don't need that. It takes away from every, yeah, it takes away from everyone. Absolutely. Well, the, I think the uh, Carl Malone and Rodman thing is the exception to the rule. Probably. Because, and Tyson uh, are probably the. And Tyson, yeah, because they got so much. Like, as a wrestling fan in that moment where wrestling still had the stigma of, like, nobody thought it was cool. It was yeah. so fun that, like, ESPN and, yeah, and like, yeah. pop culture news is covering this thing that I thought only me and my friends like. Like, in that aspect, I really was a fan. The Tyson yeah. thing works, too, because he doesn't try to wrestle. Yeah, yeah. He exactly. punches yeah. Sean. Yeah, you the Lawrence I mean? like Taylor he, thing was stupid with Bam yeah, Bam. Yeah, but like Tyson's sick because he just does like the Tyson thing and then it's like, okay. So that I yeah. like, I was mm. fine with, but like, even recently Rosario Dawson was like at AEW or something or like the oh, guy yeah. from fucking Cobra Kai. It's like, dude, we don't need that ever, ever. Sorry. Yeah. It's, it's one of I, my biggest pet peeves with wrestling. No, I I agree, and also when they get too involved, you see what happens. You when when it's when they're when they have too many matches and they're not actually wrestlers, you get Stephen Amell. Oh, I was gonna say that's that's a perfect example of what you're saying, Bo. <laughs> get out of here, Stephen Amell. Who you are bust you? your head I too much. You're you gonna are. Start... <laughs> yeah, who is this guy? I don't know. He's gonna bust his head too many times so that he starts busting unions. Fuck that guy. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, um, and then we have the main event. It's Macho Man versus Lex Luger for the WCW World Heavyweight Championship. A true, honest to God, pay per view main event mm -hmm. on Nitro. I was stunned when I looked at the timestamps and there was like 20 minutes left in the show. Same. Uh, and this show apparently went five or 10 minutes over time. This was one of the longest episodes of the show so far mm. uh, because they're trying to get, they were trying to get that extra little overrun rating which helped them win the night. It was kind of like a little trickery in ah. the ratings department. I thought uh, this match had nothing going on because Macho Man clearly still so messed up from his tricep injury. His arm is heavily taped. And what's so weird is the story of the match is also that he's going after Luger's arm. So Luger has to pretend to wrestle with one arm and I have to pretend to care. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> Luger. This is tough. Luger is the, is, is the worst. He's the <laughs> yes. boat. He is the he's the boat the wo the woat the worst of all the time. bad the 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 baddest at wrestling of all time <laughs> the boat the boat the um, boat I can't believe that they keep he's never gonna get good at this is what like eight years into his career or some shit like ten years yeah this is his second run he's in WCW already a, dude, he's not gonna he doesn't got it. So Stop can, it. can one of you break down the dynamics of these five people for me? Hulk Hogan, Macho Man, Lex, Flair, and Sting. Yeah. Who cares about who, like why it's very busy and very like, I don't, even as like a, a pretty well-versed viewer, I don't know who I'm rooting for. I don't know. That's a great point. I, I have, who, who who is the good guy here? And who's yeah? Who no who one. are we behind? <laughs> yeah, Sting, Sting I, guess. I guess. Yeah, Sting, but he's got the but he's got that friend you hate. You we all yeah. hate Luger because Luger Everyone is a part of Luger. the Dungeon of Doom now. But isn't Hogan? No, so Ho he's Hogan's he's a good guy now. Oh, he's a, a good he's back. guy again. Okay, right, he does come out in the the red and yellow. The red and yellow, yeah. He's in the okay. red and Macho yellow. Macho Man's a good guy, but Macho Man and Hogan have a little dissension. But they're friends; they're both good. Sting is like caught in the middle. He's like the center of the Venn diagram where everyone intersects. Ah, and then where's Flair? Flair is feuding with Sting and feuding with Macho. Uh, he had a feud with Macho before Nitro started, <clears> like right before. So it's literally, so, it's like a Venn diagram times four with staying in the middle of all four circles. It's kind of crazy. The only one who's like a true, like, I'm the prick is Ric Flair. He's like, someone's got to be the full yeah. bad guy and it'll be me. Yeah. And he's perfect. That's him. 
fucking and he's because he's fucking perfect. It's perfect. Him and Sting are perfect. Let them wrestle every episode and leave me alone. Now, here's one thing that I really liked. I, I did. I will say like a positive thing about the end of this episode was Flair backing up into Hogan, who gives him the you like that. Yeah, I love that. that. I love because they don't do they say that H Hogan's here at all during the night? No, they right. didn't advertise he was there at all. I was so, stunned that he was so there. So it, it actually, I was kind of like, oh shit. Like it was actually cool. It was a it was neat. So that's one, yeah, that's one yeah. half thumbs he's up. He's not on Starcade. <laughs> what? So funny. Is he hurt? He's Is he still filming or what what's going on? I, I just think contractually he's not <laughs> he's be on there. I think that's part of the reason they're doing the Japanese thing, uh, the which is another reason why I was surprised he was on the show. Uh, and next week he's in the main event. It's him. And uh, is it him and Sting? Him and, him and Sting. Him and Sting against Flair Luger? and uh, Luger. Right? No, Fl no, Flair and Arn Anderson, I think. Yeah, oh, that's right? right. No, you're right. It's Arn Anderson. Okay. Which is yeah. sick. That's a, that's a, that's a I'm excited a to watch that event. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. a good one. We're going to have a good time. I also, I want... I want Sting and Macho Man to cut promos on each other all the time because we there was the one pay per view where they were just going off. They were having the best time. Sting is the only guy who's aware uh, when Macho Man drops gold, and he's like, "Oh, I'm going to keep repeating this because that's a that's a T-shirt." Uh, they say? kept saying. Uh, like they kept saying, like I called it, like it was right straight up, <laughs> which is unbelievable. Every one of them in a circle, they were going like, "Oh, you're calling it like it's right straight up." Well, <laughs> let me call it like it's right straight up. <laughs> yeah, well, like it right. I remember that. Yeah, <laughs> well, brother, I am set. That is in my lexicon now. I'm calling it like it's right straight up. The, the like, <laughs> the Mean Gene for three man promo at the end of this, where it's, it's yeah. Hogan. Mm -hmm. And Sting, and Macho Man, and Macho Man, but Macho Man is always in the center. Did you notice he's yeah. always positioning himself so that the camera's on him? Like he's when a, one guy starts genius. talking, he'll kind of like move, and then, <laughs> and then he goes behind whoever because the blah blah blah. But there's a part, and I really like this. And again, it uh, similar to the same time when the lights go off when Sting and Flair are cutting those promos a couple of weeks ago. You could tell that Sting is ad libbing all of this. Yep. Mm -hmm. Because he'll kind of stutter and just kind of like, well, that's, you know, and like kind of do the thing to kind of formulate his thoughts. But then he like, it lands every time. Yeah. And I love, I love when he's like, he's my best friend. I'm not just going to leave him because he's doing some things I don't agree with. Macho Man's your best friend. Would you leave him? And that's yeah. like such a Hogan's good. Hogan's like, yeah, I would. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Hogan for sure would. But, but again, that gets, that's. Yeah, th what I tune in for. That's the drama that I like. Macho Man is your best friend. Would you leave him? And then it's Macho Man just going, he's not my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> just full Larry David. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love that. I have a, the, Hogan had a great line here. His first line when he gets the microphone is, well, let me tell you something, brother. You're my friend, dude. <laughs> dude. Um, <laughs> I also we forgot or we skipped over that he chases Flair into the ring and catches him by the belt, which is so mm. good. But then why does that disqualify the match if neither of them are in the match? I think he sees that there's a there's two other dudes who aren't in the match in yeah, the ring just, and the two so, competitors are knocked out on the floor. Yeah, I do like that they are giving. Uh, they they gave Macho Man the visual win at least like he's he hit he hit the elbow yeah he would have beat he would have beat luger uh the weird is, referee knockout thing is cool like like the the way that the actual match finished was cool i enjoyed it yeah i i'm uh, i'm over the non-finish but how they got there i thought was very cool like mm -hmm. it was a unique i didn't expect it i yeah. thought there would be a finish like here's we're never gonna get no one's the, ever pinning yeah. anyone in the yeah, final no match wants to of, take a loss. of nitro yeah. No one's losing. So all I'm asking for is that you treat Macho Man with respect and like he's the best because he, he is. I saw him coming out with big gold and I never didn't want to see it. Dude, that it's belt beautiful. is so sick. It's the best. It's easily like it, it's bar none. The best. <laughs> it's so good. And, and is the story of it that it was flares from NWA, right? 
mm-hmm. and and he just brought it and they were just like we're going to use this one and he was cool with it like how does that uh no so when flair was champion in the nwa you had to leave a deposit uh for the title like 25 grand with the nwa so that you don't lose the title or, or whatever you yeah. know and then when his he f- kind of got into a big contract dispute with wcw and they were like well you're fired and he's like all right well give me back my 25 grand for for the belt and they were like no and then he was like all right then i'm keeping the belt and i'm going to vince (laughs) and that's that's how he and then they they made like a new wcw title uh that looked just like a more generic kind of belt and then when he came oh and then he came back then when he came back, uh, they reintroduced the belt. It, it, they, they introduced it in a very convoluted way, mm-hmm. and then it, one of the titles became the international title, and then they eventually merged them. I, yeah. my, my timeline is sketchy. I'd have to look it up. Right. But anywho, uh, I think next week will be a good show. This this felt like an off show. Yeah, but I, I think next week we're going to be back to normal. Business how will be back how to recently normal. after, or uh, I should say before, how recently before this show was, um, World War Three? Yes, uh, it was two weeks. It was, it was the previous week actually. Oh, so yeah. that's why it's just, yeah, we just. But did I feel our like even the, the nitro after, after the yeah, yeah, and they still have three more weeks. But still, we'll get the whole card <laughs> next week. We'll see. By the way, Ric Flair also injured has a torn rotator cuff, and he is avoiding surgery. So both him and Macho are working with very bad oh. <laughs> arms. Uh, and, Our heroes. And, oh, I want to mention Eric Bischoff during the main event is like, you want to watch wrestling or you want to watch Chalky? He tried to make it seem like, in WCW, our wrestlers work through pain, like on the gridiron. Right, Mongo? And Mongo was like, no. Uh, football players, if they're hurt, they take a knee. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what are you, that's kind of crazy. Maybe no, they should, sure. maybe they should uh, take a break. <laughs> Dude, also worth mentioning that Ric Flair is – the tannest any white guy has ever been. Oh yeah, especially this it's, time of year. The con- oh, yeah, the juxtaposition December. between his <laughs> hair and his face is truly shocking. It's it's re- <laughs> yeah, he is this he, he's your orange cap. It <laughs> is an orange <laughs> fucked up. I can't believe it. It's true. It but and the, is this this is like pre spray tan era so he's yeah. doing this just with the power of florida no oh, dude i guarantee or, or you North Carolina there's, or, or there's Carolina. there's tanning beds wherever he's staying oh yeah. yeah or in the arenas or whatever like he's tanned up <laughs> the dude he is hopping in a toaster and Straight he's running up. onto tv and it's funny because like they're all they all tan luger's tan as fuck macho man too but nobody because of the hair and the the normal complexion it's like Flair looks insane. He, you, listen, you called it like it was right straight it's up. It's right straight up. You know? <laughs> Dude, I'm going to, I'm saying, uh, called it like it was right straight up. And, uh, uh, that goes double for me. I'm asking you also, I'm keeping those forever. <laughs> I feel kind of bad that we were, we kind of ran through the show already, but that's, I'm glad you guys felt the same way at least. Cause I got done with that last night, watching it last night. And I was like, yeah, I don't, there's not a whole lot. Nope. Not a whole lot we sieved out of that one. We fucking we did it, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for uh, doing it with us. Absolutely. I love this. We should, maybe we could tag Colin in for a, like a 60 second brief history of Big Gold because he knows it. He's got a Big Gold. He's Colin, got one that says gold. Colin Young on it. But he's also like a, a historian of belts. Maybe we could we could tag him in and he can film a quick thing. I think he's in New York uh, mm-hmm. when this episode drops. Mm-hmm. So we might not be able to mm-hmm. do it, but he will do it in the next episode. When okay. He's back with his belt. A Folks, field report. It's a promise yeah. right there. Yeah. All right. <sighs> Is that it? I, that's it. I'm going to bed. <laughs> Thank you for joining us for Canitro. Good Canitro. <laughs> 